Hello, my name is Kate and welcome to Habits of a Modern Hippie. I have got Little Miss Tinkerbell and Miko over here and we are back for another Samoyed based video. Hi, pretty girl. Today, if you can see, Miko is shedding like crazy. It's called blowing her coat. She's been doing it for a few weeks off and on because it has been so hot here in Denver. But one of the most frequently asked questions on our Instagram channel is how I groom the dogs and more specifically, how I comb them. You want to help talk too? <laughs> okay. So in my head, I'm always like, oh, well, you just comb them like you comb a dog. And here's the comb I use. It's uh, around here somewhere. I will show that to you in a second. It's literally an $8 comb off of Amazon and I love it. But people have been asking for more specifics, kind of in the reign of that how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich type videos. It's like, this is exactly how you do it. Put it on the bread and the peanut butter is spread on with a knife, that whole shebang. So I'm gonna take it down to Samoyed 101 when it comes to how I specifically comb my dogs. Now I'm not a professional groomer or anything like that. I have had Samoyeds for 30 years. Literally started with them as a baby and turned 30 last month. And so I've had them for 30 years. So got a little tricks up my sleeve, but it's super simple. So just super easy. If you've been a dog owner for a while, you might already do some of these things, but I'm just going to show you exactly how I use the comb. And I'm going to show you two different ways. Little Miss Miko is not spayed. So her fur comes out a little bit differently because of hormone changes than Tinkerbell's does. That's actually why their coat looks so different. So Tinkerbell doesn't really blow her coat like Miko does. So I'll show you a blown out coat and then I'll show you how I groom Tinkerbell as well when it comes to the comb. So let's cut to that overhead shot. We'll see how close we can get. I'm filming on my own today. Nico, what are you doing in my armpit? So we'll see what works. All right, next clip. All right, so this is the comb I'm gonna be using today. As you can see, it has a wide tong side and narrow side. It's probably a little blurry right now. Once again, little beauty YouTuber focus. Maybe that won't work. Anyhow, so I'm gonna use this comb, we're gonna zoom you in, and I will show you up close how I groom Miss Miko. All right, so we are here on Miko's back. I'm gonna start off with the wide side of the comb. All of the big parts of Miko are what we're gonna use with the wide side. So what I do is I start towards the bottom and I'm gonna start all the way down with that wide side. I make a part in her fur and I work with the growth of the fur. And then slowly as you comb down this side, you're gonna get further and further up. And as you can see, Miko is super comfortable. Let's see, she's literally just hanging out in my lap here. She is super comfortable and we're gonna keep working our way up just little bits at a time. And so I pull it out as the fur clogs up the comb and then just layer by layer, you work up. So you wanna brush your dog just like you'd brush your own hair. You don't wanna brush against the fur cause that's not gonna be comfortable. That's a lot of times why dogs will start to run away from the comb cause it's really not comfortable. I know sometimes it's easier to get fur out that way, but you won't wanna do that. But as you see, we're gonna start getting closer and closer and we're gonna come up towards that blowout. So this is where the difference is when it comes to blowing fur. As you can see, using that same comb, a ton of fur is gonna come out all at once. Look at all of this. That's that simple comb, lots of fur, comb gets lost, and just really easily it's gonna come out. So we're gonna zoom back out. We're gonna brush the rest of Miko and we'll come back to you. But before we do that, we're gonna move down towards legs, just because the legs are a little different. So we've got a little, little leg to do happening here. As you can see the fur is a lot shorter on a leg as well it should be. So we're gonna flip over and use the smaller side. And her legs aren't shedding that much today. So we're just gonna slowly, once again, working from the bottom up, little by little, working up the leg. And you're gonna see it comes out. Little leg fur. 
there you go. All right, so we've moved over and we are gonna start brushing out the rest of Miko. I'm gonna speed this up, but if your dog is not super comfortable just hanging out, Miko will fall asleep on my leg, things like that. Um, one good way to kind of trap them without putting too much pressure on your dog is to just use a leg and you use a leg over them so they know they're not supposed to move but there's still plenty of space in between your legs so you're not smushing them either so it gives them some protection some stability without smushing them which is once again uncomfortable so you don't want to do that with your dog but for Miko we're gonna start from the back once again we're gonna start all the way down large side of the comb and we'll start out. I like doing the big parts first and then get down to the legs afterward. All right, now that we have one side done, this is the side that we have not finished. So as you can see, it is that little bit woolier. We're gonna work under our belly before doing the other side. So the easiest way I found to do this is to manhandle your pup <laughs> between your long legs. Sorry for the crotch shot. Her head is gonna be up towards you, so you get lots of loving. And we're gonna use that same wide tooth comb and same movement. So starting from the bottom, super gentle down around where everything's going and we just slowly make your way all the way up the body. So parts of the body you really want to focus on, those armpits. You can really get some mats underneath those armpits if you don't pay attention to them. So you want to get down into those armpits, just underneath their arms, anything that creates friction and movement you really want to work down into. You comfy down there? Yeah, are you comfy? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip her. Super quick speed through this side and I will come back when we're finished. actually just found a really perfect way to show you that wool versus this long silky hair on this side. As I made that part to go with the dog fur, you can see all of that under thing here. So that undercoat is that nice, chunky, and as the undercoat sheds, you'll see where it comes off from the skin. Sometimes you can get a little bit of flakage, which is what's happening there, but all of this as I make that little part, I'm gonna take this long wide side of the brush or the comb and that all comes out. There we go. So as that comes out, when we come back into that part we just made, See how I just got a little bit out here? I just went from the center, and you can see where all of that undercoat isn't, and then this is a chunk of it, and then not again.
Another place you want to focus on is behind those ears. So this is another place that you can get super matty because a lot of times they'll have a little extra oil back there. So you want to really get nice and deep down underneath those ears. And with Miko, when you're blowing a coat, you can see even her little ear shed. Super funny. All right, after the whole dog is nice and combed, you wanna work down, I always do this for last so I can wash my comb afterward because you don't wanna put, if there's any fecal matter stuck in here, anywhere else on her body. So body first, then legs, then rear. After you've brushed the tail, you wanna flip up and you once again, you wanna start from the inside out. So I don't do a sanitary trim for anything. I can see that there's a dog fur on the lens. <sighs> there we go. So I don't do a sanitary trim for my dogs. Um, they kind of fluff out. So I don't have any experience with that. But when it comes down to grooming around there, once again, you want to start in just nice and gentle. Once again, going with the hair growth. And you just don't want to contaminate anywhere else on the pup. So super gentle all around there. And as you can see, because their anus is round, the fur kind of grows in all different directions. So as you're going down, you wanna follow the hair grain. And so sometimes she's got a little bit of fur that grows up and around, and you just wanna get all of that shed out from there as well. After everything is complete, give them a big snuggle. And generally speaking, I give them a treat too. Are you nice and comfortable with all of that fur going? Hi, yes, it is your turn, Miss Tinkerbell. We'll show everybody how to brush you too, huh? Everybody. Hi. <laughs> You're such good puppies. All right, no, don't walk through it. Oh. Okay, so. Ugh. Tinkerbell, right here, is the same concept. No, Miko, out of here. Tinkerbell's the same concept. She is not gonna have the same undercoat that Miko does because Tinkerbell is spayed, a <laughs> pretty girl. But we're gonna do the same little thing. So I'm just gonna show you a little patch of little Miss Tink. So we're gonna let her stretch out. Are you gonna go upside down? And so once again, even though her fur is longer, Miko, you gotta get out of here, come on. Even though her fur is longer, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come down into that fuzz Start near the bottom with a little part, hold on to the top, and then slowly, using that wide side of the comb, work our way in. So as we work our way up towards the center of the body, we just do more and more parts. So you'll see the stuff coming out of Tinkerbell looks a little bit different than what Miko comes. So you'll see Miko are a little tufts and a little fluffier. Tinkerbell's hair is a little bit more wiry. Still incredibly soft though. It's, when I say wiry, it's just, uh, it's not as like fluffy. Hi, <laughs> pretty girl. So same thing, starting from the bottom and up the belly, moving through parts. So this is Tinkerbell's longer fur. You're gonna see it looks a little bit different than Miko's because the longer fur is longer, obviously. And then the undercoat, while there's still an undercoat, is not as completely defined as Miko's was. So using that wide comb, I'm gonna slowly come down in there and Tink's not shedding nearly as much. But same thing, working down to get that fluff underneath. And so this is that fluff. You'll still be able to see the difference and you'll see where you need to brush or comb is that same kind of dense fur. Most of hers down here is okay. Let's go ahead and feel around and see where is there's up. There we go. This is a patch that needs to be combed out. So you can see as my fingers are going through, it's a lot denser at the bottom. We're gonna come down through here and you can actually see that there is some dense fur in there that looks like it's about ready to come out. So we're going through. And 
just slowly brushing that dense fur out. And that's what's coming out. So not nearly as puffy as Miko, but same concept. I'm going with the growth of the fur. And even though it's longer, it does the exact same thing. Oh, look at these cool puppies. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Mm. Look at this puppy. Look at this puppy. Look at her. Hi. <laughs> oh, squish, squish, squish. Squish, squish, squish. All right, so we have Miko all the way fluffed out. She's probably still gonna need a few more large groomings in the next couple of days as the rest of that fur comes out. But Tinkerbell is nice and done. No, I don't have to do this every day. Yes, you're gonna have to do this every day when your pup is blowing their coat like Miko is. And you do have daily maintenance. Generally speaking, I spend maybe 15 to 30 minutes depending on what their coat is looking like that day, each day, literally each and every day to brush these dogs. I get so many DMs and comments and things saying, oh, well, my dog is matted, their fur is all the way down, um, stuck down towards the skin, should I just shave them? Absolutely not. Um, there are very, very few circumstances in which that you want to shave a Samoyed. That is very specific to like rescue Samoyeds, things like that. If you have a Samoyed, take care of it, please. <laughs> I love these girls, but they are a lot of work. So just make sure that if you're going to get a Samoyed, you know what's going to go into that. Um, that being said, if you find a really bad mat, coconut oil, this wide tooth part of the comb and time is gonna help with that. So you can look into that to start getting some of those mats out. Hi, are you just giving me lots of love? I love you too. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out on Instagram. I do pull questions from Instagram and make videos about them here. I also do question answers in the Instagram stories often to answer your questions. I get so many DMs that it's really hard to respond to everybody, especially when it's the same question over and over again, which is where a video like this comes from. But if you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe. Are you hitting subscribe? Great job. Hit that subscribe button down below and ding that bell so you can see when we are gonna upload content next. But we will see you again soon. Bye. Can you girls say bye? Miko's like, nah, there we go. Bye.